Veneta Van Caspel once said, inflation takes from the ignorant and gives to the well-informed. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the economic and geopolitical impact of inflation and what does it mean for you. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. Inflation in the United States of America is at a 40 year high. Because the cost of living had skyrocketed, inflation was surging. That prices new number on inflation worse than expected, and as Americans well know. UK prices have risen at their fastest rates in more than 30 years. I understand inflation is a real challenge to American families. Let's talk about the mother of political change. Indeed. Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> yeah. Whoever thought, Ross. For those people who do think and pay attention, this is the correct thing, mother of political change. And what's really underneath this? Well, indeed, because majority of us, and of course we shall not generalize, but majority always associate inflation with just economics. Right. Which is not the, the whole truth, shall There's we say. There's a whole lot more to this story. Yeah. And it was always the question that became to all of us to ask, you know, as a geopolitical analyst, I asked myself, what else is impacting inflation? What could it be? And this is what we're going to delve deeper today when we go to the whiteboard as to the discussing what are the reasons for why inflation exists and does geopolitics influence its trajectory or the other way around? I got a quote that I found. Let's sure. like to just read it for people. Yeah. For many, it is logical to associate the term economics with geopolitics, as economics is very frequently presented as the key to understanding numerous geopolitical situations. It is well known, for example, that wars are fought to take control of petroleum resources or fertile land. Exactly, and that's what we've been, we've been noticing throughout history. You know, to me, that's the, always, as a student of history, mm -hmm. you always use history as your guide because it provides examples, which is exactly what we are living through today. This, what's going on today, just for you to know, is no different than what took place in the 1930s of the last century. It's what took place in the 1980s of last century. And it's no different than what it took uh, in place in, the, in, in 2014, this century. So, and we're gonna provide you some examples to all this. So this is why it's important to understand uh, for you if you have, you know, whatever part of the world you're in. And we're sure you've noticed the fuel prices are up, food prices are up, and commodities and so forth. So some of the prices are just, the, the inflation is just staggering. One I thought was, one that really impressed me was mm -hmm. pasta in Italy is up 40%. I'm not surprised, Ross. I'm not surprised. And when we take a look at what's going on in Venezuela, mm. one estimate I saw, 3,729% inflation. Now they said 2,000, but we know is it's astronomically high. And 20% of the population didn't have enough to eat and had to leave the country. And that becomes the question for us, is not about just economics, but also psychological impact. And we're gonna to go to the whiteboard for that in a few minutes. Okay, then let's go to the whiteboard and we're gonna start breaking this down for our viewers to have a better understanding of what inflation is all about. Okay. So as we discussed, Russ and I, we're gonna be breaking down uh, for you what it all means, because a lot of people are so confused about inflation. What are we talking about and how is, does it come to being? Yes, of course, economy or economic conditions are part of it, but there is also something else. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna break it down this way. Inflation, two ways, key ones, geopolitically and economic, okay? So if I'm to talk geopolitically, it becomes the question of do decisions or policy decisions, geopolitically speaking, influence inflation, with whatever direction that might be. There are those who say, no, it might not. Others say, we don't know. Then there are third category of people that said, it certainly does. And to understand this geopolitically, how geopolitics influence inflation or policies in general, I'm going to give you three examples. And the three examples are 1930s, last century, 1980s, and 2014. 
like we mentioned earlier. So in 1930s, what happened in Germany? Well, Germany had to, in about 1929, had to pay reparations to the U.S., okay? Then they end up being broke. <laughs> when they end up being broke, inflation went up. So the successful two governments couldn't reverse the course, paved the way for January 30th, 1933, the election of Hitler. And we all know what happened after that. As we say, the rest is history. Because it was the inflation that paved the way for the new geopolitical direction under which Germany at that time, or, or Hitler, and, or Europe for that matter, embarked on. Fast forward to 1980s, at least for us here in the United States. What happened in the 1980s? Who was in, uh, in, in, in the presidency at that time? It was Jimmy Carter. Okay? And during Jimmy Carter, a lot of assumption was made that he lost the election to Ronald Reagan because of the Iranian hostage crisis, which was true to a degree. What has not been emphasized is that during the 80s, there were two issues, both of them economic. One of them is tied to oil or energy prices, and the other one has to do with food prices. So it went up. And when time comes for, came for the elections, people start to think with their pocket, as we said. So they voted with their pocket because they saw the prices of commodities going up in energy. So they end up voting for Ronald Reagan. That's how and why Jimmy Carter lost his second term bid. Move to 2014, which is only what? Eight years. India. Who was at that time in charge in India? It was... Manmohan Singh was well, saying lost the, the elections 2014 because of inflation. So my point is that whatever inflation conditions there might be, it's forcing the trajectory of the countries to go one way or another. In, this, in certain cases of this, we're looking at the next just within this year, 2022. You have about 50 countries. 45 to 50 countries, they're going to have elections. You know, you're looking at, uh, on the top of my head, I don't have the list in front of me, but uh, based on my research, I found out that, that like Israel, uh, Turkey, Bangladesh, uh, Pakistan, uh, they have elections. You can just see, Indonesia, you can just see what's going to be happening. Because even, they're going to be thinking in terms of economics. Even for us, here in the United States, what's coming soon? November. We have in our system midterm elections. How do you think, if you happen to be an American watching this video, how do you think people's gonna vote comes November? With the energy prices so high, with the food prices are high, and people are struggling to make ends meet. So that's my point. Just for you guys to understand, doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, just for you to understand. Inflation forces governments to make changes into uh, the uh, geopolitical decisions or domestic ones. In the case of U.S., because you're looking at a, an increase in food by about 40%, and energy is about 8% increase. That is very problematic for some average Joe, average Jane. So this is what happened here. The other example I can tell you quickly here, it has to do with Venezuela as an example. It's because the political decision that was, they were made from, because remember, from 1970s to about 2022. Inflation, as Ross mentioned, went above 2,000%. That's almost hyperinflation. And that's causing more problems because those are political decisions that end up influencing the outcome. Like, for example, population migration, when Venezuelans, 20% or 6 million people left. So this is the geopolitical aspect. On the economic front, you're going to have to think in terms of how the people's going to manage their economies. Why? Because the monetary aspects will become useless. In the case of Venezuela, again, so much money, but it's worthless. And that's what inflation does, because for us in the U.S., if we keep printing money, for example, it will contribute to that. So for you as a consumer, whatever part of the world, but we talk about if you are an American here, you will notice 
What you buy today with $100 will cost you next week about $150 to $200. Will cost you even $300 to $400 in about six months. And this is exactly where we are with oil prices. Back last year, it was about at least $2.75 a gallon. Today is about almost five. Usually it's four sixty-nine in some part. Depends on what part of the country you're in. California has it over seven dollars a gallon. So this is why Europeans are going now back to coal. Because inflation forces governments to change policy. That's my point into this. To understand the psychological impact of inflation, something I found really helpful is early in my career, I studied the work of Dr. Arnold Toynbee. He was an economist historian. And basically what he said is, gather as much information about a particular scenario and step into it yourself as if you're living it. That way you have the most full representation of what another person is experiencing and I found it enormously helpful in understanding human beings. Can't recommend them enough. Fact, in 2021, 64% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. What does that mean? That means they spent every cent that they had on four walls, food, transportation, and incidentals. They had no savings, they had no luxuries. End of the pay period, they were broke. That's 64% of Americans, one of the most affluent countries in the world. What does it mean to 1.4 billion people who don't live paycheck to paycheck, they live below subsistence? They're on the border of starvation. They're impacted by inflation even worse than the rest of us. 1.4 billion of 7.4 billion people live on the planet. That's an enormous number of people. And when we take a look at all the, the prices going up, what do we experience? Certainly, more people are going to fall into that paycheck to paycheck routine. That means the the standard of living, their quality of life is on the way down. And you don't hear any leadership in any government saying, well, we've got solutions for this. So what they can count on is it's going to get worse for me and my family. Some tax laws have changed in the United States. And now it's called the tax child credit. Any number of thousands and tens of thousands of families no longer have enough food for the parents to have three meals a day if the children are going to have three. What does that really mean? And especially since they see no hope of any change coming with it. Fear? Is it real? Yeah, the quality of life is diminishing. The number of people living in the middle class is on its way down, and if you're in the middle class, you're feeling it yourself. Fear, anxiety, and what's the net effect of fear in somebody? Well, we know that they're going to get less effective. They're going to go into bodily fatigue. They're going to be edgy. They're going to be irritable. And it's going to negatively impact family life. It's going to negatively impact careers. What does anxiety do? The same thing. It takes you to exhaustion. So one of the things you can count on is these things are real. They're happening worldwide. And you can expect people to be more edgy, more irritable, and more ready to fight. So what does it mean to all of us? Unless we get inflation under control, we're going to see the degradation of life and all the factors that make life worth living. You know, after the whiteboard presentations, it's clear there's a whole lot more to this story. And nations must start to reconsider all the factors that go into inflation. And do they really want this to occur? Exactly, Russ. And this is what we're seeing, for example, with Europe. They are reversing their policies, or even here in the US, they are reversing or they're going to have to reverse certain policies. Otherwise, you don't want an unhappy population that could create serious, serious problems. So, well, we look forward to seeing you next time. As always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.